Hello guys and welcome back to the Zane Investing. Today, I'd like to discuss how AMC has returned to the regulation show threshold security list. The cost to borrow charge and FTD numbers plummeted in May, but it appears that this was only temporary because AMC is back on that threshold list. The cost to borrow fee is skyrocketing and there are numerous significant AMC catalysts. Therefore, remain tuned and let's earn some cash. And now we will present the essential information. Consequently, Biotech Moose tweeted, look at that number. With FIDs, hedge funds doubled, tripled, and quadrupled down in order to delay the inevitable. They anticipate retail sales will increase after their official, non-stop price cut. However, they predicted it incorrectly. When the ANC price was at its greatest point in 2021, the number of FETs was actually quite low. Since then, however, they have increased the number of fits as they have doubled, tripled, and quadrupled their manipulation in an attempt to lower the AMC price, despite their success. There are two factors. First, they have failed to persuade retail investors to sell. And by lowering the price, they have doubled, tripled, and even quadrupled their short positions. They have not lowered the price and closed their short positions. They have decreased the price, but increased the number of shorts by a factor of 2, 3, and 4. This indicates that they are now more overexposed and severely overleveraged than they were in January and June of 2021. They're effectively stuck between a rock and a hard place because they're more overexposed and overleveraged, and they're in a worse position because retail investors haven't sold and they have even more short positions, especially as it's now impossible for them to close these shorts without a massive increase in the AMC price, followed by a squeeze. As a result, all they can do is attempt to continue pushing the price down and hope that AMC declares bankruptcy, as it is evident that retail investors are not selling the stock. Either AMC declares bankruptcy or the shorts will be compelled to close their positions at some point. However, as Stonks Batman noted, the end of May witnessed some of the lowest FETs in recent memory. However, on June 23 of the following month, the number of FETs was so considerable that AMC was placed back on the regulation show threshold security list. Consequently, not only are these FATs back in full effect, but the cost to borrow fee will also once again spiral out of control. Again, this is already evident, as the AMC's cost of borrowing has risen from 40% per share to 200% per share over the past two or three weeks. I anticipate that the number of federal employees will continue to rise and that the cost to borrow will continue to escalate back over 1,000%, back over 2,000%, and even higher. And as Dade Murphy tweeted, he stated that the AMC and ET volumes are nearly equal and that the AMC cost to borrow is once again rising. And he said, I can't wait until Abe is removed and the shorts have nothing left to use as equivalent security for their fraudulent locations. Many of these hedge funds and market makers have likely been using APE as AMC locates for new AMC positions, which is something I've discussed in the past. Obviously, there are no remaining AMC shares and there are billions of synthetics on top of that. And many have questioned how these hedge funds and market operators continue to locate daily new AMC shares. Obviously, we are aware that they have these synthetic tokens, which are once again on the move but it is also probable that they have been using APE as false AMC locations because they are equivalent securities. AMC and APE are both technically shares of AMC Entertainment Holdings. So it is plausible that market makers have been misusing available APE shares as AMC locates. But evidently, once this conversion occurs, there will be no more false locates for these shorts, and they will have to either locate actual AMC shares or begin closing short positions. And this AMC ape conversion could serve as a catalyst that causes this cost to borrow fee to escalate out of control even further, as well as those FETs. This conversion could increase the AMC cost to borrow by 1,000 or 2,000 percentage points annually to 5,000, 10,000, or even higher. And at that juncture, I believe a short position on AMC becomes extremely, extremely unstable. The shorts will repay their entire short position in borrowing fees within a single day. In addition, this tweet from Stoka reveals another catalyst. This message is the most essential aspect of the ANC movement, he tweeted. He tweeted that they cannot stop a dividend if we raise the capital 
or all we have to do is go to the movies, buy some popcorn and soda from the AMC merchant, and view movies on Voodoo. By assisting AMC in becoming profitable, the company will be able to declare and pay dividends much sooner. Moreover, while AMC pays this dividend to its actual shareholders, synthetic shareholders must also receive a dividend, which is paid by the shorts. Again, this is merely another method to compel the shorts to pay hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars in quarterly dividend fees. Again, the combination of dividend fees, escalating costs to borrow, and spiraling fats only makes matters worse for shorts. And I believe that this new measure to claw back bank executive compensation if their bank fails makes the situation even worse for these shorts. Now, I believe that this measure will be expanded to include hedge funds and hedge fund managers. It is reported that a Senate committee has advanced a measure to claw back bank executive compensation if their bank fails, such as in the case of Silicon Valley Bank, where numerous executives made millions. The bipartisan proposal, known as the Recovering Executive Compensation Obtained from Unaccountable Practices Act of 2023, would impose fines of up to $3 million on top bankers and bank directors after an institutional collapse, essentially stating that if Citadel Securities went bankrupt, Ken Griffin's annual salary for the last few years would likely be forcibly withheld under this Recovery Act. If it is determined that hedge fund managers were negligent in their fund's demise, which is a foregone conclusion in the case of hedge funds collapsing as a result of an AMC pressure, their salaries would be withheld. Personally, I would love to see Ken Griffin's salary recouped and distributed to victims of his synthetic shorting. And as Joshua Sky tweeted, the 8 to AMC conversion is forthcoming, followed by the AMC reverse division. We are aware that with a spiraling cost of borrowing and shorts, incurring enormous losses across the market in companies such as Tesla, Nvidia, and many others, their ability to endure is limited. Total short positions on the stock market have reached approximately $1 trillion, and these hedge funds have lost $100 billion so far this year, which represents 10% of their total short position. As I previously stated, 10% may not seem like much, but for a severely overleveraged hedge fund with a 7 to 1 leverage ratio, 10% represents nearly all of their available capital. As a result, as these losses persist, whether as a result of tech stocks increasing further or AMC's cost to borrow fees again spiraling out of control, they approach the margin call. Clearly, when that day arrives, they will experience margin calls and liquidations. It would quickly cause the AMC squeeze, particularly considering that simply covering the FETs from the last two years would return AMC's price to $70, at which point the squeeze would commence. So please let me know what you think in the comments section below. As always, gentlemen, be sure to ring the notification chime so that you are notified whenever I upload a new video. Cheers!